Thank you for having me here today. Every day, Netflix offers highly curated and highly produced content to over 100 million customers around the world. Stranger Things is one of them. I haven't seen the second season, but I highly recommend it. <laughs> I've heard very good things about it. So my job at Netflix is to make sure, as you said, that when customers come to our service, they just get what they want. All they want to do is search or find the content that they want to see and watch it. So our goal is to have over 100 million happy customers. But the truth is that we run a relatively complex distributed system, and sometimes something goes wrong. And then our customers are not as happy as you may have hoped. Um, when you have over 100 million customers, and when something goes wrong in your service, usually not only one customer is affected, or even 25, or even 100. Usually, many, many more are affected. And this is something that we think about a lot. And one of the things we think about is, if you think about what happens when, when we have an incident, very, very quickly, the customers that are affected become faceless. Um, there are only 900 pictures on this image, on, on this slide. But oftentimes, when we have an incident, it can affect. It can. It doesn't always, but it can affect even millions of people. So let me give you a little bit of more context on my work. As we said, we have more than 100 million customers around the world. Together, they watch more than 125 million hours of content every day. So if you put those two numbers together, you will see that if one of my services fails, you can affect a lot of people relatively quickly. So time is of the essence. And as we'll go through this presentation, this will become clear how we think about this. Today, we have about 380 microservices in production. I say about because that changes sometimes. It is also the case that some of the services that we run really don't deserve a name that has micro in it because they're really gigantic. But we have, that's, that's about the scale that we're looking at. And Netflix also runs on over 1,000 device types. So that ranges from um, you know, your mobile phones, even older kinds of devices to set-top boxes, and to your TV at home, to your smart TV. All of these we support, so over a 1,000 device types. And we do all of this with less than 10 core SREs. Um, so you may think that we're a little bit crazy, and that may well be true. Um, but let me tell you a little bit about how we accomplish this. One of the ways that we accomplish this is by having a very strong DevOps culture, which is not the topic of this talk, but I'm happy to um, tell you all about um, offline. Essentially, every team is responsible for the own services that they run, and then the central core SRE team is responsible for the overall um, reliability of the service. This picture gives you a, more, um, a better visualization of our distributed service. Now, these are the 380, roughly, services that I mentioned earlier. Now, note that these are only the services that are what we call on the streaming path. And that means when you come to Netflix, um, everything that you need in order to actually be able to watch a movie. Normally, you don't need all of them in order to be able to watch a movie. But those, every circle here represents a service that is responsible for something that you may do on the service. Search, recommendations, um, localized um, descriptions, and so forth. So what you see over here is you see traffic coming in from the internet from the left and going through our various gateways so that we have a um, gateway that routes traffic. And the gateway routes traffic to our various front ends, the biggest of which you can think of as the, the dot here in the middle, which is our API, what we call our API. And the API, um, to give you a sense, 
talks directly to about 70 services downstream from it. And then, of course, indirectly to several hundred, as we've, as we've talked. So if you think about the system and um, our central team being responsible for this, what I see is that insights are everything. You need to automate the heck out of this thing. You need to make sure that whatever you can get automatically, you get. It is not feasible that one person understands everything that goes on inside of the system. So how do we get insights? We have various tools in our toolbox, but one of our most critical ones is Mantis. Um, Mantis is a cloud-native stream processing service built on top of Mesos. The way Mantis works is that we instrument a lot of the microservices that you saw in the previous slide, not all of them, but many of the very critical ones, and we um, give them the ability to emit metrics to Mantis. Um, we also gather, we also have the ability to get, gather metrics from various other data sources such, such as Kafka and Amazon S3 and various others. And so then the data flows through Mantis. And the way this works is that internal users, so Netflix developers, can write Mantis jobs. Mantis, like I said, is built on top of Mesos. It's a Mesos framework that we've developed. And then our, our Netflix developers create Mesos, Mantis jobs that can aggregate data, that can filter data, that can perform operations on that data and do various other things that eventually lead to such things as alerts, operational dashboards, anomaly detection. So the way to think about this is our microservices and these other data sources emit operational metrics that give you insights about service health. And those metrics are processed automatically with Mantis jobs and then lead to alerts, operational dashboards, and so forth. And they do all of that in real time. And again, that is very critical because we, have, we can have a lot of users affected very, very quickly when something goes wrong. Let's take a little bit of a look under the hood. Um, as I've mentioned, Mantis is, is a Mesos framework. And in order for it to satisfy our own needs, our own Netflix needs, we developed our own scheduler called Fenzo, which is open source. Um, Fenzo is optimized for cloud. It is very important for us because all of our, um, our entire streaming um, infrastructure and all of our Mantis jobs and everything else that we run runs on top of AWS, um, in this case, EC2. So what does it mean for Fenzo to be optimized for cloud? One of the things it allows us to do is it allows us to scale the underlying agent cluster. Um, auto scaling is very important to us, and we'll see that a little bit later on. But the amount of data that gets pushed through Mantis jobs varies greatly over the course of the day and the course of the week. So as our resource needs change, we also need to scale the underlying clusters. Fenzo is also designed to allow us to have, to satisfy various other constraints that we have, many of which are, you know, pertain to the cloud, some of which that don't. So for instance, we can do bin, bin packing, task affinity, um, and one of the other things that has to do with, you know, the way we have our cloud set up is spreading tasks ac across um, EC2 availability zones so that you can accomplish high availability, which obviously is quite important for us. Let's talk a little bit about how we use Mantis and what we use Mantis for internally at Netflix. One of the things that we do with Mantis is something called real-time SPS. SPS stands for stream starts per second. So essentially, this is a metric of how often people are able to come to Netflix click play and actually are successfully able to watch. So it works. Um, this is our, one of our most important top level metrics that we use to determine system health. So if SPS um, hits a wall and drops, we know something is going wrong. 
So real-time SPS, which is powered by Mantis, allows us to get insights in real time um, into whether SPS is in line with our expectations or not. So what you see here generally are two lines, um, and the black line is essentially the expectation that we have of what will happen, um, which is based on historical data and various algorithms that we have. And the blue line is the actual observed SPS. So sometimes they're a little bit off. Um, I didn't show the numbers here because I cannot, but um, the scale obviously matters here. But it gives you an idea of how closely aligned we are with expectations. Um, Real-time SPS lets us know that something is wrong, if something is wrong, that something is wrong in seconds, not minutes. Um, we have various other ways in which we can determine whether something is wrong with SPS or our overall system health. But real-time SPS really lets us know within seconds sometimes. And that can make the difference between, you know, 900 and 9 million users being affected. So this is something that's pretty critical to us. Um, Real-time SPS, in our case, and for many of our metrics, this is the case, we are able to break it down by region. This is important because many of the incidents that we have these days are isolated to one region. Um, we run in multiple regions on top of AWS, and um, the way we generally roll out our software ensures that when incidents do happen, they happen generally only in one region, which is great because then we have several mitigation techniques that we can apply, for instance, shifting traffic from one region to another, which we do frequently, we just did last night. Um, and hopefully nobody noticed. So breakdown by region is important, and then breakdown by device type is also important. So SPS, real-time SPS, and our other metrics are generally broken down by device type which allows us to narrow in very quickly on which device or devices are affected. Um, that is important because, as I mentioned, we have a very strong DevOps culture. We have subject matter, matter experts that are um, you know, in the know and responsible for specific parts of our system, and that also applies to specific device types. So if we have an issue, for instance, that only affects, say, TVs, um, then we know whom to call um, for help. We don't only use Mantis for SPS, as I've alluded to. We use it for a variety of different metrics. Again, the idea is the same. Teams can set up individual um, dashboards and alerts and other um, kinds of analyses for all kinds of different metrics that um, we gather. So for instance, here what you see is, I had to black out the specific paths, but what you can do here is the API team um, set up uh, a dashboard that shows elevated 500s for specific paths. And the specific paths or endpoints are specific to specific devices. So again, that lets you, if you have now elevated um, 500s, um, error codes coming from a specific endpoint, then you know um, that gives you clues as to what might have happened if something does go wrong. As I mentioned before, auto scaling is really important to us, and that's one of the reasons that we developed Fenzo. We run on top of um, EC2, and we scale the cluster day in and day out all the time. Um, that goes for our services that are on the streaming path, as well as for the Mantis jobs that we run for analysis and insights. Um, as you can see here, um, roughly 18 million messages flow through Mantis jobs at peak, whereas only about 6 million flow through Mantis um, during trough. And if you think about it, why is that? This is because you know, usage of our actual service varies greatly over the course of the day. You know, people don't want, tend to watch a lot of Netflix while they're sleeping, but they do tend to watch Netflix while they're at home in the evening and not so much while they're at work. So you see this, uh, you know, the cyclical nature um, of our, of our, um, the usage of our service and the usage or the number of messages that flow through Mantis, <coughs> excuse me, mirrors that over the course of the day. So as we, as we go, we, we have to scale the cluster so we can um, make better use of our resources. But we don't stop there. Um, we do something that I call streaming on demand. And the way this works 
is that we allow users, again, that's internal Netflix developers, to set up ad hoc queries that allow them to stream data only when it's needed for operational insights. The way this works is that you as the developer, you can set up a query, um, say, that pertains to a specific um, status code or path, and only then that data is streamed from our, say, API service or one of the other microservices that we run on the streaming path. That data is then streamed and analyzed by Mantis. Um, and you can get real-time insights and real-time um, information on, um, on that service only when you need it. And again, that is important because we have so much data that we would otherwise have to push through the system that it's actually just not really feasible. So with this, we actually greatly reduce the amount of data that does need to get streamed through our system while at the same time allowing for the same kind of flexibility and the ability to have those insights. So when you um, define one of these ad hoc queries, a Mantis job gets um, created under the hood and started on one of our um, agents' hosts. Um, again, auto scaling comes into the picture here. So this doesn't follow exactly the same um, cyclic nature as we saw for the number of messages. But what you see here is essentially how many jobs get set up on top of Mantis over the course of a day. Um, so essentially, when people are at work and they're debugging and they're trying different things um, or different smaller things can up, uh, come up that they want to chase down, they set up Mantis jobs um, to, to dig into um, before performance and behavior of our service. What does that all mean? Let's bring it back. I, th I think it's important that we sometimes take a step back and think about the infrastructure work that we do or the work that feels like it's very deep down in the stack and take a step back and think about how it actually affects real users. Um, in my case, what Mantis means for us is faster detection of issues so we know of issues in seconds rather than minutes which somebody sitting in, I don't know, India in their living room trying to watch, watch Netflix, it may really affect them. We have faster insights into the causes of those incidents. So not only do we understand something is wrong, because of Mantis, we can actually get faster insights into specifically what happened and what went wrong. And again, we have a faster path to mitigation. So we can, if we know what's going on, or if we know, for instance, which region is affected, we can very quickly take steps to mitigate the issue. So if only one region is affected, again, we can just shift traffic away from that region, and nobody, no users will ever know that anything bad when, uh, happened in the first place, hopefully. And this is what we really care about at the end of the day, all of us, right? And we, we care about uh, making sure that our customers are happy um, and that they get the service that they actually signed up for. Um, if you want to contact me, here's my contact information. I'll be around for questions if any of you have any. Thank you.